Good morning. Good morning. I didn't turn my worship music on this morning. I need to do that. But we are here for morning tea time. I'm doing throat coat today with some honey and lemon because I've been having like a allergies or something. Um, I wasn't going to jump on this morning, but I just thought, you know what? I'm going to jump on and hang out with whoever wants to hang out and um, encourage you with what I have going on today. Getting homeschooling ready for the morning. Hello, everyone. We've been starting school around 8.30 instead of 8 this week. It's just been one of those weeks. I've been up and around. I've just been extremely exhausted. So anybody else feeling that way this week? If you have, give me a heart party. Hey, hey, everyone. Come on in. Come on in. Y'all comment down below and let me know who's in here with me. My voice is trying to go out today. Alexa, play CC Winans. Come on. I want to hear some CC this morning. Anyway, morning tea time. I hope you guys are having a great morning. I hope that you are up and at them and are excited about the day and um, have started your day out in the word, have started your day out encouraging yourself. If you haven't, that's okay. You can definitely start. Um, sorry that I'm not like super entertaining this morning. I'm just on here to hang out with my friends and sometimes that's all you need. But um, I wanted to uh, encourage you with some thoughts. And uh, as I am getting homeschooling ready for the day, hopefully you guys will be encouraged this morning, um, which is so funny that she's singing the song. You can do all things. Can y'all hear that music? If you can hear that music, give me a heart party. Y'all must be asleep because y'all are jumping in, but you're not commenting or I'm not seeing your comments. He can do all things but fail. So whatever you woke up with this morning, you may feel like you don't understand how it's going to work out for you, but baby, he can do all things but fail. I don't know who needs that, but I need that today because sometimes you feel like you're just failing. Sometimes you feel like God is just failing. Sometimes you feel like it just ain't going to work, but mm -mm. Um, today, my little, we've been reading out of this little thing over here. She believed she could, so she did. My husband got me this little, like, encouragement book for my birthday. And um, today's little encouragement note was half of doing is believing that you can. Half of doing is believing that you can. And I just kind of want to talk about that because, you know, so many times we wonder why it's not working out for us. I love that this song is playing. He never lost a battle. I'm not going to sing for y'all this morning because my voice is so struggling, but I got my throat coat. Anyway, he never will. You have to believe that God can, and you have to believe that you can. And I don't know what you woke up with this morning struggling with, um... But you can get through this. I've had lots of people reach out to me this week that are in the middle of a cancer journey. And um, obviously, that's something that I deal with a lot because um, I help a lot of people in that area. But, you know, I've just had a lot of people reach out to me that are like, I just don't know that I can do this. I don't know that I can make it through this season of my life. I don't know that I can make it through this moment of my life. I don't know that I can really make it through this thing that I'm looking at. And, you know, that's a real feeling. 
like that's a real feeling. And I want to encourage someone this morning with the fact, and we're not like, I'm not preaching on these morning chats. These morning tea times are literally just me talking to my friends. Like I would talk to you in my kitchen. Um, it's hard going through real life circumstances, but I want to encourage you to feel the feelings of those moments. Okay. It's one thing to have faith, but I talk about this in my book, Unfiltered, that faith without feeling is going to cause you an opportunity to not uproot the fear that you have so that God can help you plant his word in that place. Do you hear what I'm saying? So have faith for whatever it is that you need today, but don't neglect the opportunity to feel the thing that you're going through. Yes, Stacy, you have to feel it to heal it. And, um, you know, that's something that we neglect a lot, especially if you've been in the faith world. Like I, I was born and raised in the Word of Faith movement. I went to a Word of Faith Bible school. Um, I'm a Word of Faith woman. I will preach faith all day long because faith, you know, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And faith is vital to our walk. But I think that we've also neglected the side that there's real life feelings that are connected to hard things. Hey, hey, Lisa, I love you. Good morning, Marsha. So there's real life feelings that are connected to hard things. And I just, I want to encourage someone this morning who's waking up and discouraged because they're feeling feelings and you're like, Whose stuff am I working on? Okay, I'm working on Kinsley stuff. Sorry. I'm trying to get my stuff going for the day, but sometimes I forget. Um, so sometimes we like rob ourselves of the opportunity to feel the feelings. Good morning, Kathy. And what we do is we put ourselves in a position to not uproot the issue that we have. Um, thank you. I got this at Bucky's. And I became obsessed. It says inside of it, enjoy the little things. It says it right here on the side. I loved it, so I got it. Um, good morning from Minnesota. So um, we rob ourselves of that opportunity. You know, you have to feel what you're going through in order to address the issue that's happening, okay? And so you can try to cover it up with faith all day long. It's like this, if you have a garden, if you have a garden, and you're trying to see the flowers flourish and you keep like putting fertilizer and miracle grow and water and giving it sunlight, but you're not addressing the weeds. The weeds are going to keep growing with the flowers. All of the stuff that you're doing is still going to, it's not going to um, make the weeds not produce. Do you hear what I'm saying? So we have to address the weeds, which is our feelings. We can't just neglect them just because we're in faith. You hear what I'm saying? So like feel the feelings today, but take time to always come back around to, you know what? God is in control. And now that I've uprooted that weed, you have to replace that root with something, right? Right? So you're going to replace it with the word of God so that that can grow instead. Okay. So when you're feeling the feelings, don't feel condemnation or guilt that, oh my gosh, I'm feeling all the things. I'm feeling grief. I'm feeling worry. I'm feeling panic. I'm, I'm putting myself in a bad position. No, you're actually putting yourself in a good position to uproot some things and give it to God. Because sometimes you don't even know what to give to God because you're putting yourself in denial of what's really happening in your life. Good morning, Brent. So here's the trick, though. You can't allow yourself to sit in those feelings and stay there. So feel the feelings, but don't make your bed there. Can we just cheers to that? Feel the feelings that you may have concerning a circumstance or a situation or a giant that you're facing. Give yourself a moment to feel that. Good morning, Jennifer. Good morning, Roxanne. 
but don't make your bed there in front of that circumstance and live there. Do you hear what I'm saying? So we address it. We address it. We allow ourselves a moment and then we uproot that. We say, okay, that's where that root is coming from. That's where that fear is coming from. I see that now. Or maybe even when you're feeling that feeling, say, okay, God, I'm going to let myself feel this for a moment so that your Holy Spirit can reveal to me why this is such a prominent feeling right now. Like, show me why this anxiety keeps coming up. Show me why this fear keeps coming up. Show me why this concern keeps coming up. Show me why this worry keeps coming up. I'm going to feel this right now, God, but I just want you to know it's because I want you to reveal to me the reason behind this, the trauma behind this. So that we can uproot it together right now. Good morning, Marsha. And while I'm feeling this, I'm trusting you to help me uproot this so that we can plant the word of God in that place. Because sometimes we don't see the fear and the panic and the worry and the anxiety leave because we're trying to plant the word with the weeds. Ooh, that was good, guys. I'm going to go back and write that down. Sometimes we don't see the things we're wanting to see in our life because we're trying to plant the word with the weeds that are going on in our garden. And so we're wanting the word to grow and everything that God says we can have to grow, but the weeds are growing right along with it. And so, so yeah, this morning, I just wanna encourage you to allow yourself to feel the feelings so that you can um, uproot those weeds and see the fullness of the word grow rather than the weeds and the word growing and you're like, okay, God, I feel your peace, but I still see all of these other little weeds in my garden. What in the world? It is okay to feel stuff. I, I feel like sometimes we, um, sometimes we have this misconception that if we feel things, we're not in faith. And I'm just not of that belief system. And I'm just hanging out in my kitchen with my friends, like talking real talk and not, you know, sugarcoating things. But I think that when we think we feel things, we think that we're, we're not in faith. And guys, let me just burst that bubble by raising a glass to the fact that you are human with flesh. You are a spirit man wrapped up in flesh. And I think that it would be crazy to believe that we don't have real life feelings just because we're men and women of God and we're men and women of faith. So you have to combat, you have to combat those feelings by saying, okay, I'm feeling the feelings because I'm, I'm human, but I have to give the Holy Spirit space to show me the true root of why this feeling keeps coming up so that we can uproot it and plant the word of God in its place and see what the Lord wants me to see in this moment. And um, that's, where, that's where you have to do our little devotion this morning. Half of doing is believing that you can. Half of doing is believing that you can. And I woke up this morning with that mentality, like as I was making my tea, I was like, okay, God, there's some things, you know, there's always going to be things in your life that you don't know if you can handle, but it's like that song that just played a second ago that he can do all things, but fail. And if I believe that he is on the inside of me, then how can I fail? And sometimes that's hard. That, that's a hard place right there. That is a hard place place right there because you're like, but I really feel like I'm failing right now in this moment, Alyssa. I get it. Okay, friend, I'm right there with you this morning. I mean, if you feel like you've been failing lately, comment down below. I'm with you, sis, or give me a heart party because I think it's good to know that not all of us are perfect. Can we just like, hmm, Tired of pretending. 
That's what these morning tea times are about. We're spilling the tea. I'm tired of pretending. I'm tired of seeing people pretend. I'm tired of having friends that you can't be real with. I'm tired of the church being a place that is not relatable. <laughs> I'm tired of people thinking that your miracle is the only thing that's going to bring people to know Jesus. Sometimes it's your loss. Sometimes it's your pain. Sometimes it's the realness of your situation that actually helps people through because they're like, oh my God, I can finally relate to that. Did you know that most people cannot relate to your miracle, but they can relate to your trauma? Did you know that most people cannot relate to the goodness of God, unfortunately, but they can relate to your pain? They can relate to your fear. That's the reality of life. So hiding those things, I'm just going to say it is stupid. <laughs> ah, I'm just going to say it is stupid because that's the things that are going to make people go, oh my gosh, she is right where I am right now. I feel, I feel it. I feel the anxiety. I feel the stress. I feel the worry. I feel the pain. I feel the trauma. I feel the hurt. I feel the confusion. She is right where I am right now. And still she's showing up and counting on God. Still she's feeling her feelings and uprooting weeds and planting the word of God in its place. Still she is standing on the word no matter what she feels, no matter what she sees. I see hell falling all down around her. I see hell falling all down around him. And they are still still standing. That's what I relate to. I may not relate to their miracle. I may not relate to the goodness of God because somebody may have never experienced that, but they can experience your pain. They can experience your trauma and your fear and your anxiety. And you standing in the midst of that is what's going to make them see Jesus. That's what's going to make them understand, man, something is different. I have got to, I have got to get a hold of whatever it is that she's experiencing. So I want to encourage you today, if you're feeling the feelings this morning, starting your day, do not be discouraged. Do not be dismayed. Do not grow weary in well-doing. Do not feel like you are a failure. Do not feel like you have given up. Do not feel that you're not a man or woman of faith. Realize that God may be right there in the midst of that. To help you recognize where the root is so you can uproot it and plant the word of God in its place. So that you can see growth in the place that you want to see. Good morning. That's a word, guys. That's a word. That's a word. I'm just, I want to encourage you because sometimes we get into guilt. Like, why is the church so guilty? That's a whole word. Why is the church so guilty? We did this test yesterday, I think. Yes, we did this test yesterday. Um, the church is so guilty. And I just don't, I don't understand why we live in guilt. Jesus literally said that there is no guilt or condemnation to those that believe in me and have put their trust in me. Good morning, Corey. Love you too. So stop living guilty, friend. <laughs> stop living guilty. Do you know that the moment that you take the power away from the enemy and say, you know what? I'm not going to live in guilt anymore. I'm going to live my life knowing that I'm human, but that Christ is overcome. And that's how it's going to be from now on. And that is the moment that you're going to see things shift because no more can the enemy play games with your head. No more can the enemy play games with your head. Nope. 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 And it's going to change things for you because uh, what's the date? Uh, I am mixed up today. Is it Wednesday, the 24th? Oh my gosh, this week is going by so fast for me. Um, 
When the enemy can't play games with your mind, man, he has, he has like no power. <laughs> he has no power. And so, and it's inevitable, guys. The, this right here has to be a daily. That's why we go back to our devotion this morning. Half of doing is believing that you can. Let me replace the doing with winning. Half of winning is believing that you can. Half of overcoming is believing that you can. If you don't believe that you can through Christ, you're going to constantly struggle with the feelings and the weeds in your garden. You're going to constantly struggle with your thought life. You're going to constantly struggle with the anxiety and worry and the fear and the pain and the torment and the trauma and the whatever it is that you're facing. The giant is always going to be there standing in front of you, mocking you because you don't believe that you can. Let me help someone out because I just heard this thought. But I truly don't believe that I can. Have you ever felt like that? Like, I, but I truly don't believe that I can. So am I just destined to never overcome and never, never see victory? If you felt like that, give me a heart party. You really, truly don't believe that you can. Um, there are times that I truly don't believe that I can either. Let me ask you this question. But do you believe that Jesus can? Guys, I look a hot mess. I didn't go to the gym this morning, so I'm not getting ready because when I drop my kids off at homeschool co-op, I'll have three hours. The, they're doing um, they're doing a science class and they're doing theater today and then they're doing lunch break. So I'm going to the gym and doing some errands then. So just ignore all of this. But you may not feel like you can, but do you believe that Jesus can? Because if you believe that Jesus can, at least you can put your faith there. So you may not be able to put your faith in you. And you don't need to. You need to put your faith in the fact that Jesus has done it. This girl. You need to put your faith in the fact that because Jesus did it, that's why I can. Not because I have done something great or grand. Not because... Um, I have the strength, not because whatever, but because Jesus can, I can. And if I believe that he can, I'm going to show you my tattoo again. I got this. He won equals I win every day. I am like looking down at my arm and reminding myself of that because Jesus won, I can win. You may not have belief in tattoos. That's fine. We're not on here to debate that. Cheers to cheers to personal opinions and freedom of doing whatever we can do. But for me, I needed to have a daily forever reminder that the reason why I overcome and win is because Jesus overcame and won. And in moments that I can't physically remind myself of that, that's when I look down and say, oh yeah, you know what? Jesus won, so I win. I want you guys to remind yourself of that. Put that on your phone. Put it on your mirror. Put it on your refrigerator. Refrigerator. Does any other Southern girl say refrigerator instead of refrigerator? Refrigerator. Put it on your refrigerator. I just sounded so country. <laughs> We're just hanging out. We're just hanging out. That's so funny. Every time I say that word, I laugh at myself. But um, put it on there. Jesus won, so I win. Hillary. Refrigerator. Uh, that's what I say. My husband laughs at me all the time because I make up my own words. And he's like, Alyssa, that's not a part of vocabulary. And I'm like, it is because I just said it. And it's a part of my vocabulary. And that's all that matters. Um, <laughs> good, Sandy. I'm happy I'm not alone. So just remind yourself this morning, y'all, God is in control and you may feel like you're not in faith to feel all of your feelings, but God is even in those places because he's helping you uproot things that need to be uprooted. He's helping you to see things that need to be taken out so that he can plant the word in its place. 
Do you hear my music? This is Alabaster Box by CC Winans. Fun fact for you. This was the very first song I sang in my very first singing competition when I was 13. 13, 14, 13 or 14. And I killed the game. I'm not no CC. I definitely wasn't starting out with singing because I had a lot to learn, but man, this song this song hit my heartstrings. I was 14 because I picked Alabaster Box because I had just been raped. And it says, you don't know the cost of the oil. You don't know the cost of my pain. And the when Jesus met me, man, this song is so good. You don't know the cost of someone else's oil. You don't know the cost of what it took for them to get where they are, what it took for them to feel their feelings, what it took for them to uproot those traumas. You don't know the cost of what they've been through. Mm. Anyway, I love you guys, and I hope that you have a great day. Go throughout your day with the mindset. Um, my praise on him like oh. Man, my voice is gone, but I can sing the song. I love Best of Bucks. Man, I love this song. It's so good. My kids are like, why do you listen to the song so much? It's so old. I'm like, because this is so good. You can't tell me how to praise. You can't tell me how to worship. Like I legit, guys, my brain's everywhere. As a worship leader, I legit get dumbfounded standing on stage, looking into the crowd at dead worshipers that just stand there in a pew with their hands holding themselves up on the pew in front of them because they're so tired of standing for worship. They can't sing. They can't raise their hands. They can't clap. They can't just let out a shout of praise. And I just think to myself, you don't know the cost of my praise. You don't know what I've, the hell that I've been through to stand right here. Ain't nobody going to shut my mouth up. Ain't nobody going to shut me up. I'll look like the biggest fool on that stage. I'll look like the biggest fool in the room. Everybody in that room can be a, as dead as a doornail. But I'm going to keep on going. Man. I think to myself sometimes when I look at people who are really radical in their praise, like oftentimes I go and find them after service and I ask them, what's your story? Tell me your story. You should do that. Find really radical praisers, the kind of people that people make fun of, the kind of people that people sit and make fun of. I remember being a kid and other kids around me making fun of certain adults in the sanctuary that were just crazy, radical shouters, runners, praisers. And now that I'm an adult and I'm that because God's brought me through hell, I've overcome too much to not give him my praise, even on my worst day. I'm still going to drag my big old tail out of bed, go to church on Sunday and praise, and maybe the only person in there doing it, but that's okay. Um, I like to go up to them afterwards and ask them, what's your story? Like, I encourage you to ask people that, like, what's your story? I saw you. I saw the way that you were worshiping. Like, there has to be a story behind that. There has to be a freedom behind that. There has to be something that Jesus did for you to worship like that. And I just want to know your story. It's just like, it's just something to think about. I always look around the room and find those people because I know that God's done something too good for them to sit there and act like he hasn't. And it's just so good. Anyway, um, this morning worship, spend some time with Jesus, feel the feelings Uproot the weeds, plant the word, get radical because that confuses the devil. If he can't control this and he can't control this, then he has no power. If he can't control your thoughts in your mouth, then he has no power. It may look like he has the power, but that's because it's, that's his poker face. That's his poker face. He really does it. It's like playing a game of BS. And you got to call him out on it, right? That That's that's not happening. So I love y'all. That was my morning tea time. 
just hanging out with my friends, just blabbing about things that are on my mind. I hope it encouraged you in some way or another. Um, no agenda this morning, just speaking what's on my heart. It's eight o'clock, y'all. I gotta wake my kids up. It's one of those mornings. We've got a long day at the homeschool co-op. And I'm running behind today, but that's okay. I just don't wanna wear myself out too fast. So we're gonna go as slow as we need to go and we're gonna get her done as fast as we can. So I love y'all, you be blessed. Thank you for hanging out with me and having tea. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll talk to my friends later.